Hello everyone and welcome to a Python for Engineers video. Today we're going to be talking about Python variables and operators and we're going to use Newton's equations of motion to explain how Python variables and operators work. So today what's going to be covered in this video is definition of a Python variable, the assignment operator, what is it and how we use it, the definition of a statement in Python, and then we're going to talk about variable scope and what that means. Then we're going to move on to the types of number of variables. We're going to talk about string variables as well. And we'll do a little bit of printing of some variables. And also we're going to talk about arithmetic operators and how they can be used. Just a little recap for Newton's equations of motion. They assume constant acceleration. And there are three equations. One that describes the final velocity in terms of the initial velocity, acceleration, and time. And the distance based on the initial velocity, acceleration, and time, and the final velocity based on initial velocity, acceleration, and distance. So I've listed here, v final is the final velocity, meters per second unit, v initial, meter per second, acceleration is in meter per second squared, and time is in seconds. Also here, let me add to this, the distance, s, is the distance, in meters. We're going to see how we could like solve problems using equations, Newton's equations of motion in Python. So let's start out by talking about the variables in Python. So variables are nothing but reserved memory locations to store values. So any computer program needs to reserve some memory to put data in it. And variables in this case are labels that allow us to reserve memory space and then we can use that label to retrieve what's in that memory space. And based on the type of variable, the Python interpreter allocates memory and does things for you. We're going to talk about why Python is an interpreted language in a different video. So therefore, when you assign a value to a variable, you then store that value in the memory location and you can retrieve it using the variable. So let's do that here. Let's say that I have an initial velocity, I'm going to use this variable name, which is vi underscore mps, which means this is the initial velocity in meters per second. I'm just using a descriptive variable name. And then I'm going to use the assignment operator, and I'm going to assign this the value of 3.2. Right? So this is my code, and you can see here that I'm using Jupyter Notebooks, which is this interface here. It's really nice. I highly recommend that you download it when you want to play around with Python. It allows you to do that in an interactive way. So I'm going to run this code cell. So now I've run this. So what happened is the interpreter read my assignment here and knows that I want to call a variable vi underscore mps and I want to put the value 3.2 in memory under that label of vi underscore mps. And then you might say, well, how do you know that it worked, right? Well, I don't right now, but there is a... Um, function that is a built-in function into Python, dir, that allows you to print variables that are in scope. So if I can run that, then I can see the output of this call that I made dir to a function. Now we haven't talked about functions yet. There will be another video where we talk about functions. But let's just for now say basically they are things or pieces of code that allow us to do a certain operation. In this case, dir allows me to see the variables in scope. And you can see that here, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and this is because Python, when Python runs, it has a bunch of stuff in it, in its scope right now, so don't worry about it. But this is vi right here, right? vi mps, so I can see that. And I can see that somewhere, Python's interpreter has been able to assign memory location, put 3.2 into it, and give it a label, which is the variable of vi. And what I mean by scope here is the region of the program where the variable is accessible. So in very complicated big programs, there are a lot of variables that get created, a lot of memory gets created, and things get stored. However, you don't have infinite memory. So you're going to have to write your program in a way where there are scopes, where every time a piece of code is used, there will be a scope where memory is allocated, things are put into it, 
And then when that scope goes away or disappears, or the variables, as is typically said, go out of scope, they just go away and disappear. So right now, what I have here is my scope, and you can see that all these things are defined. Most importantly to us is this VI. So if I had another program, and I defined VI underscore MPS here, in that other program, its scope doesn't see this. So it's not going to be able to call it and see it. Okay. So I want to see the value of this variable that I've assigned. Before we do that, let me tell you what a statement in Python is. A statement essentially is a set of logical instructions that the interpreter can read and then execute. And what we did up here is actually a Python statement. It's an assignment statement. It's a statement that takes a value and uses the assignment operator to assign it to this variable. And that now, like I said, is created some memory, labeled it with this variable, and put in the value in there. There are also other types of statements, or the, the other type of statement is the expression statement, or typically just referred to as an expression, which is where we use logical operations on numbers or strings or any other kind of variables to come up with a new value. So let me do a statement here that uses the built-in function print to print vi mps. Right? So this is supposed to print for me what the value of vi is. Uh, MPS is and also what I can do is I can define a VI string for example that says um, this is the initial velocity in meter per second let's just call it that for now call the VI string so what a string is essentially a list of characters every one of those is called a character and if I have a list of characters in a certain order, they're called a string. And this is, again, an assignment operator where I assign a string value to the variable vi string. And then I can also then print like this. And so you can see after running this code, when I just did print VI MPS, it just printed 3.2. So it printed the value that's stored inside VI MPS or inside the memory location that's labeled with the variable name VI MPS. But I wanted it to look nicer. So what I did was I made a string variable and then I printed the string variable first and then I printed the value. So you can always print in your programs or you can log in different ways, but it's always, in my opinion, better to log in a way that's easily readable to the user, right? You don't want to just print 3.2. If somebody just sees 3.2, they're going to be like, what is that, right? So it's good, it's good practice to use strings and to make your prints look prettier and nicer so that way the user or the other developer or the software person that's using your code knows what you're doing. Okay, so now we can also, since we now know what a variable is, and we can define different variables, there's multiple kinds of variables in Python, right? And most importantly for engineers, it will be the number type variables. So what we just defined here, this variable is a variable of type float. So I'm not gonna go into what exactly are floats and longs and all those things. You can pick any programming book or just go online and Google that and you'll, you'll see it. Uh, but I just wanted to show you that also in Python, uh, you can define uh, an integer. Right, which is not a float, it doesn't have any decimals. So say like you had something like the terms, the number of terms in a Fourier series, right? That'll be five. It can be 5.1, 5.2. This is technically going to be an integer, right? So, and then I can do something like print the number of terms in the series is, and I can just print that right so there we go it's five and what i did here was i used a what is referred to as a string literal so in this case i didn't like previously define a string and use it in the print function i basically just wrote a string right there and it will take it the same way so this is essentially a different way of doing things but it's still valid it's typically called a string literal because it's, it's a literally a string right and it's just being passed i'm not creating a variable in between um, and i'm passing this and it's printing these values you can also in python uh, define complex numbers so typically when you have roots if you have equations with multiple roots you can get like 
you know, a, a complex, let's say a complex value of the root, right? And, you know, if you wanted to, let's copy this and print that. The root is 4.82j, right? So that's a complex number. So as you can see now, we're building up. We're building up from the idea of what a variable is, what kind of variables I can have, floats and integers, and there's also booleans um, and strings. And these are basically the, the basic data types in Python. But now you can see the possibilities, right? So we're going to go ahead and move on and do some arithmetic operators and use Newton's equations of motion as an example. So let's start out here. We have an example that says, assume that you have a vehicle that has a constant acceleration of 2.3 meters per second. Calculate the final speed after 4 seconds if it starts from initial speed of 10 meters per second squared. Right? So what I'm going to showcase here is how you could use the addition operator and the multiplication operator. But now what do we have given in the problem? We have V initial and that's equal to 10 meters per second. Right, we have the acceleration, and that is 2.3 meters per second squared, and we have the time, excuse me, we have the time for seconds, right? And I make it a habit of in my variable name to put the units because then the whoever's reading my code, or when I'm coming back to read my code after a month or two months or six months, then I know, oh, this is this is time in seconds. Because you can use time in seconds, nanoseconds, you can use accelerations in Gs or meter per second squared. I just make it a habit of doing that. There are, you know, packages out there that allow you to set variable units. Uh, but it's it, to me, it just feels simpler and more responsible as a, as, a, as a developer or a software person to put the unit inside the name of your variable. Okay, so now we need to calculate the final velocity. So that's what's required is to calculate the final speed or the final velocity. And if we scroll back up here just to refresh, final velocity is initial velocity plus A times T, right? So you can see this is an assignment. We can use this as an assignment, the equals here, and we're going to use the plus operator. We're going to have to use the multiplication operator. So how do we do that? We do that here. We say V final is equal to V initial MPS plus the acceleration times time in seconds, right? And now if I run this, nothing happens. Right? It just basically, it didn't print anything, but there's a lot happening under the hood. We assigned some values to these variables, and then we wrote this expression that will sum the multiplication of acceleration times time to the initial velocity to give me a value which I then assigned to this variable f using the assignment operator. So you can see all these building blocks of variables, operators, and expressions, you can start building more complicated lines of codes and statements that allow you to do things. So let me move this up here, actually. So I, I, you've probably noticed these green lines here and in other code cells. These are referred to as comments. So anything that you put a hash in front of in Python and you write, the Python interpreter doesn't even look at it. To, to the Python interpreter, it's nothing. It's only good for the programmer, yourself, or for somebody who's reading your code because then they can understand what you're doing and why you did what you did. And you can basically, you can never have too many comments. There are some people who think that you could. I'm personally not one of them. I think putting comments in your code that explain why you're doing what you're doing is always a good thing. Okay, so now let me copy this statement here so I can use it to print. So this is our answer. So the final velocity of the vehicle is V final. And look, I forgot here to use my units. So I run that and it prints, that's the final velocity of the vehicle in meters per second. Okay, so now example two says calculate the distance traveled by the vehicle in example one. So again, we're going to use the one of the equations from Newton's equations, which says the, the distance S in meters is going to be equal to V initial MPS plus half 
uh, times the acceleration times the time squared. So the way to square something is to either multiply it by itself, right? So this this term right here will give me the square root of speed, or we can use the exponent operator in Python. So this is basically going to say t to the power of 2. So this is another operator that you could use, um, and I highly recommend that you do. So this allows us to compute the distance. So now we can say, okay, so the distance traveled by the vehicle is SM, right? So that's the distance traveled by the vehicle, 28.4 meters. So one more thing we can talk about is the subtraction operator. And we're going to do that again with another example. It says a runner travels a distance of 50 meters at an acceleration of one meter per second squared. What is What was their initial speed if they had a speed of 12 meters per second, right? So we know the final speed of this runner and we know how much they've traveled at what acceleration. So if we use this final equation, we can solve for the initial speed, right? So what we can say is V initial MPS will be equal to V final MPS squared, again here with the exponent operator, minus 2.0 times acceleration times S underscore M. Okay, now I need to take the square root of this term. So what I did here was I took this equation right here I took this term to the other hand side, so that's why you have minus 2 times a times s, and now I need to take the square root to get the initial velocity. How do I do that? I can use the exponent operator to the power of 0.5. But I can't run this code as is, because the variables that I have used here, v final and acceleration, are the same variables that I defined here as well. So what happens is, in this scope, again, remember, the scope is the part of the program where the variables live. In the scope of this program, we have all these variables. We have vi, we have a, we have t second. So if I go back here and I run this again, you can see that I've grown. When I run dir, I've grown all these variables. There was only one variable in the beginning. Now I have all these things that are defined that are in memory and that are labeled as these variables. So if I just go ahead and run this, I would get the incorrect answer, right? So I'd have to essentially overwrite at least the acceleration to be 1, and I have to give the distance to be 50, and I have to give the final speed to be 12. And then I can, if I run this, and I print uh, the final velocity, be runner's final, uh, sorry, initial speed is, so there you go. That's the initial speed of the runner 6.6. .6. Well, that wraps up our video on Python variables and operators. I hope this was useful for you. So I highly recommend that you can get this notebook. Uh, I, I'll, I'll put the link below for its location on GitHub and that you go in and you explore on your own and you make your own variables and you use your own examples instead of Newton's equations you can use anything else and try to play around with it and see how if you understand how to make variables assign them values and use expressions to change their values. Thanks for watching.